The AI industry is growing 37% year over year. However, there's so many people who want to break into AI but doesn't have the right tool set and also the knowledge to figure out what's the best methodology to enhance the day-to-day -day operations doing the day-to-day -day work and also start to innovate using AI. In today's episode, we're going to have our guest speaker, Anna, who is going to give us a deep dive regarding different kind of tool set for AI. It's going to improve the productivities of product managers and also help all the product managers to become the top 1% candidate who is able to innovate on top of AI. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a direct product featured in Forbes. I've helped thousand people land the dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader in this channel. We talk about tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe, check out our new video every Tuesday. Hi, Anna, welcome to the show. Really nice to be here, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I have been following you on LinkedIn for a little while, and you are the LinkedIn top voice and also the one who organized really big AI conferences that actually making moves uh, in the East Coast and also actually within the US as well, very famous ones, and which we're going to dive deeper later on regarding all the um, advanced AI knowledge you have been sharing within the AI community. And Anna, based on my research, and actually you are the founder of Data Science Salon and also the founder CEO of Formulated By. And I'm so uh, looking forward to see all the different kind of AI elements of the past experience. And now for everybody who is interested, uh, uh, who is listening to this episode, let me do a formal introduction of Anna. So Anna Anderson is a successful serial entrepreneur, business owner, and fashionista with deep root in tech. She began her entrepreneurial journey at 16 and has since uh, achieved multiple exits. Currently, she leads data science salon and driving innovation in AI and machine learning uh, and, and runs formulated by a boutique B2B marketing firm that has served over 100 clients like AWS, IBM, and O'Reilly Media, and recognized as LinkedIn Top Voice and Forbes Business Council members. And Anna contributed regularly to Forbes, leveraging AI for growth and marketing. Welcome to the show, Anna. Thank you so much, Nancy. It's great to be here. Anna, can you tell us more regarding your exit? Because I am always a big fan of other female entrepreneurs and how they start companies. And given you already had two exits in the Silicon Valley, can you tell us more regarding your past startups and exit? Yeah, for sure. So my first exit was really um, when I was young and 25, and I'm going to age myself now, but it was a long time ago. And um, it was something that I built on my own. And uh, that's how I learned about all this tech. Um, and wow. we got acquired and... Um, for half a million dollars was not a big exit, but at that time, you know, 25 was quite significant. So then I started, mm -hmm. uh, started going into and building and uh, consulting for companies in the Valley and then um, ended up founding another company called Pasari in 20, it was, gosh, it was 2010, 2011. And we built the first software uh, slash marketplace for the funeral, for the funeral industry. So like the end of life care industry, as you call it. Mm -hmm. So and we got acquired by a uh, giant um, insurance carrier in uh, 2013 for $50 million. So and that's wow. when I left the Silicon Valley and moved to Miami too. And then I ended up starting two other companies. Uh, but maybe I'll have another exit, you never know. Yeah, the serious entrepreneur. This is amazing. And that's very fast. Actually, only two years, you start a company 20 11 and you sold it for 50 million dollars was in two years this is so exciting this is like literally yeah it was very fast yeah it was very fast and we had like we had a plan we we raised i believe eight eight million dollars or so and we just had a plan and we onboarded we were able to onboard that many customers so quickly because we were the only like there was nothing nancy there was nothing there <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I yeah. feel like we were just very like we were the first to market. And that's what happens sometimes in like industries that are kind of blue ocean, which is mm -hmm. like there's nobody doing anything there. or It's really like archaic. So I think that was what happened there. It's not really a, like a normal thing to happen. Like, right. It takes a lot longer usually. But because it was so specific and it was so niched 
to this industry. That's why I'm like, that's why it worked out so well. So, but yeah, usually it takes longer. But before, honestly, when I was in the Valley, there were a lot of like, it was about two to three years, you're in and you're out. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like you're in, you raise the money, you built the thing, you get to a certain amount of users and then you're out, like your exit. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I believe it's always like this. Once you find the product market fit, it's very fast. Oh, it's a yeah. hockey stick growth. And then yes. depends on how founders want to do. They exit, they, they sell the company, or they continue to stay on. But this is Oh, such yeah, a I didn't want to stay on. It was just such a morbid space, you know? So I left very quickly. I would have gotten more money if I stayed, but I left and I started building other things, you know? Mm -hmm. so, now you're yeah. into AI. I think it's a exactly. way it's better much move. More, more interesting. <laughs> Awesome. So Anna, let's, let's dive deeper. Um, given you already have so many years experience in the AI space and lots of people are quite a little bit confused regarding, well, should they become AI PM or maybe AI PM tradition PM are quite similar. Um, can you tell us more regarding what you understand the differences between AI PM and traditional PM and how AI is actually influencing the AI PM work? Yeah, absolutely. So there's two different types of product managers out there. Um, you know, the regular product manager that we know, um, and that one is more related to, you know, working with the marketing team, customers, uh, the engineering team, design, C-level, and probably the UX uh, and experience team. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not going to really be touching the data science team or any of the AI, right? So that's one type of a product manager. And you will see that as more on the marketing team. But now, I mean, I would say probably in the last 10 years, we've seen the emergence of the AI product manager. And that is a technical yeah. person who is interacting not just with marketing. They're also interacting with ethics. They're interacting with engineering and data science team, right? So it's a lot more complicated and you have to have different skills to do the AI prod PM job versus just a regular PM job. So, but what do you think, Nancy? Is that is that kind of how you see the difference? Yes, um, I agree with what you said. I also feel like AI PM a uh, lot of time is trying to do a lot of new innovation and also trying to figure out what is the biggest moonshot ideas they can try to hit for the long run and also what they can do today through any kind of like small innovation, such as figure out things that can use AI to address some lower hanging fruit today. Um, for example, and like the, the typical most advanced AI I've seen is more a like self-driving car, right? So those kind of product, they don't exist at all without AI. But we also see a lot of day-to-day -day, like AI tools and that help us to achieve and better productivities and typical things like we have seen a lot of AI chatbot. And even within my company, I have a team of AI engineers developing AI chatbot for my student inside a PM accelerator. So there's a different range of AI product out there and AI product managers depends on the type of product they build, the level of AI expertise is different and also how the different product the methodology is also quite different. But what I see this entire domain is growing very quickly and very, very exciting. Do you think, just a, another question for you about this, mm -hmm. do you think it's easier to upskill as a PM into an AI PM or do you really need to have that statistical background? I think it's easier for normal traditional PM to become AI PM, even if you don't know how to code or you don't know data science. Um, because what hybrid manager is looking for is someone who is able to lead the team, really execute on the product vision and know what kind of tool set and what kind of existing fundamental models they can use today to create like very advanced and new innovations using AI, which leading to today's main topic, we're going to dive deeper regarding different kind of AI tools or product managers need to leverage. And we also have seen a lot of my students inside of AI PM bootcamp. Most of them doesn't have st statistic background and they don't know how to code, but they were able to like lead a team of engineers to create many very advanced AI product within two months, just because they leverage the fundamental model that's available on the market right now. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So it sounds like you should probably have those skills anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they should start to learn what it's about, but advanced ones regarding you don't need to um, like be the data science 
to become an AI PM, but there's many different paths、uh, to make it happen. But gaining experience building real AI product is most important skill set people need to master. Yeah, cool. No, And, great answer. Yeah.、Um, so. Uh, Anna, let me let me do this. Let's do some introduction regarding overview of Gen AI and what's today's and、um, state of art regarding the AI development right now. Would you able?、Uh, yeah, would you able to give us an overview? Yeah, I mean, there's really you know before about eighteen months ago, or I guess now almost two years ago, when、mm-hmm. ChatGPT came out, the、uh, generative AI was kind of secretive to people, right? It was kind of behind the scenes. So, but now it's really relative, and people understand what it really is, right? So,、mm-hmm. and that is really the tip of the iceberg because ChatGPT is really the beginning, but there's a lot more advanced tools out there. And as you know, in organizations such you know healthcare finance. They have some of the most advanced tool in this, and they've been working in this in you know area for quite some time. So it's not just text to image,、uh, you know, text to code, but it's also you know creating videos and images and really creative things that save so much time and resource that it's definitely going to change everything、uh, over time. Not right away, but I think in the next five years, everything will change as far as you know. You're talking about skills. Uh, and uh, you will definitely need to have skills to be able to use these tools、uh, to be、yeah. more, you know, to be more successful in your position. So I, that's what I see happening, and that's what really generative AI is leading. Is that everybody, not just PMs, but pretty much anybody in tech, has to upskill quite、uh, quite high to be able to use these tools uh, and um, you know pretty much find hallucinations and biases and all those things that. That exist. Yeah, exactly. Now let's、um, dive deeper regarding those tools and different kind of applications. And you mentioned earlier, especially in healthcare, and、um, they have very advanced AI applications. Can you give us some kind of breakdown? For example, today there's so many existing large language models out there.、Um, they are ready to transform people's lives. And can you be specific regarding, for example, how different industries is using AI to advance their、uh, product? Development or creating new innovations. Gosh, there's so many different use cases, Nancy.、Um, you know, there's research, there's ideation, there's、uh, brainstorming,、um, there is, I mean, gosh, there's、um, cancer discovery. I saw something recently where you know they used AI to discover cancer like 18 months before it showed up, breast、mm-hmm. cancer. So, I mean, that's a huge thing, right? So. Um, you know, ChatGPT is used everywhere, as you know. I think probably、yeah. that would be something that's used by PMs the most. Claude, Claude Day as well.、Uh, per, perplexity dot AI for research. That's a big one. And、um, you know, again, I think there's going to be a lot of ChatGPT is really like where you start the ideation process, and then you really move on to something probably more advanced. Um, mm-hmm. And、uh, for image generation, it's you know really you know I think napkin AI is something I've used recently. I don't know if you've heard of this one, but it's really cool、uh-huh, too, where、smart. you you literally just like put in a little outline and it creates an image that you could use in your presentation. So you don't need a designer to create that for you anymore, right? So that saves、yeah. so much time because before in your process you had to like okay this is my outline then it goes to the designer then it goes to this now you just do it yourself.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, yeah, and so actually. Is- Yeah, I totally agree. And actually, it's a process. And using AI speed up lots of product development. As you mentioned, have we don't need to hire designers or especially those entry level designer in order to get something、exactly. fast, right? So we don't need those designers right away. Which are also seeing the trend in the market right now. Lots of entry level, fresh out of school designers not able to land job as fast as before. Which means all the entry level people are getting replaced by AI. Not all of those type. It is trend right now, and, and regarding ChatGPT, I do have some kind of observations and very interesting. Not just for the product management、uh, innovation process,、um, and actually in the day to day life. So recently,、um, ChatGPT launched the voice mode, and the day one they launched voice mode, I was able to do like four people conversation 
with ChatGPT in the middle, and which I have my kids, <laughs> my three-year-old toddler, and also my mom who only speaks Chinese, and also my husband who doesn't speak Chinese at all, only speak English. They're all just trying <laughs> to have a conversation, and ChatGPT just right sit in the middle. They say, "Oh," and well, I just heard the grandma is having a conversation with Nancy about A B C D things, and then just and then summarize everything to my husband. And I was like, "Oh, holy crap! He understands everything." My mom basically immediately said in Chinese, saying that, "Oh, which means in that in in that case, we can never bad mouth about him anymore in Chinese." <laughs> 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 then ChatGPT translated. And, and, and the story to my husband said, they just said they're going to reduce and talking bad about you moving forward because of my help. Said, oh, yeah, it's so smart. And that's what I the movie heard. Uh, of course, lots of like, uh, for entertainment purposes, but it definitely enhanced people's lives significantly. Yeah, for sure. And I think you can also connect ChatGPT with other tools like Zapier to generate, like, get no code automations. That's a huge thing for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of things running at once, so the automation part is huge. So that's definitely made things much easier. Um, and I think for product people as well, I'm sure Zapier has been used yeah. like create, you know. So now that you connect, like if that's even better, that makes life easier, more efficient, and you could prototype things much easier now, much faster, right? So you don't need like literally to create a product, I feel like you could really create a prototype quite quickly because of these tools. Mm -hmm. So now let's dive deeper regarding how it helping product managers. One of the observations I have seen, and also I personally tried out, is that the AI was able to help product management, especially through the voice of customer interview process, doing the discovery with customers. And I was able to use at those like ChatGPT and other large language models to directly summary or summarize all the voice of customer interviews, which is typical what they do. And then was able to generate the customer persona and the list of customer pain point directly using those existing chat GPTs. So in your experience, I, I know you were leader in the AI space. Um, how do you see other people leveraging AI in terms of like customer discovery at the beginning of the innovation, maybe for designers as well. So um, can you give us more uh, what have you seen and examples you have seen in the industry? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, for this, gosh, like our designers that, I mean, we work with designers, as you can imagine, and most mm -hmm. of them pretty much use chat GPT now to generate some like initial ideas of what they want to do. So like, they don't even do it themselves anymore. Uh, they basically just prompt it. And then they show you if you like the direction, and then you say yes, and then they start working on it themselves, right? So, so that's wow. like, that's how you like, that's how it works now. Like, that's really like how I mean, not all designers are doing this, but the ones we like, again, we encourage everybody to be the most efficient, but that's what we've seen. Um, you know, that's again from the creative side and then from the marketing side, I mean, most folks pretty much do all their research, like the R and D teams and such, they pretty much do their research on there and they, you know, like you have to feed it some information, obviously you have to give it some stuff like, you know, but once you do that, then it can be pretty dangerous because you could get a lot of information and you could get the customer profiles as well. Like the personas, you know, with marketing will work with those as well. Uh, mm -hmm. to be very accurate um, about their preferences and such. So, and that's very helpful, um, you know, about because personalization, it's all about that right now. So it helps you really to personalize the messaging that you're putting out there for people. And yes. You know, that's a game changer too. This is so exciting. Let, let's dive deeper regarding different tools. You mentioned the designer can just quickly create some ideas. Do you use the tool called napkin.ai, the one you mentioned earlier? Yeah, so I use that tool. I actually, I mean, I, it just came out like literally a couple months ago and I, I've used it and now we don't, I mean, it's better. It's specifically made for presentations, like for, dia, you know, like for diagrams. So you don't like, so basically that's what the model is. They fed like thousands of different diagrams and PowerPoints and presentations. And now it like knows how to create the best diagrams for your program. So, so yeah, so that's like the best thing I've seen specifically made for that. Mm -hmm. So for the designers, you mentioned they just use AI to generate some images. What tools did you use? Do they use a typical large language model, like just ChatGPT, ask ChatGPT to do it, or they have a customized tool for designers? 
I think some, like, I think tools like Figma and Canva, like, mm-hmm. they probably, and Adobe, they probably do have some of those tools inside them now to give you some of those too. But I, I've heard that chat GPT is better. I, I <laughs> That's I what I heard. <laughs> I tried it myself, actually. Um, and including there's another tool. Uh, if you're product managers, you must know this tool called Mirror, M I R O. Yeah. So actually, when filming this video, uh, filming this podcast today, and Mirror just launched another AI tool, and literally yesterday, and looks like all the existing popular product manager tools are adding AI to make their experience better and also make product management product managers work much more efficient. That's how I think where the trend is going in the in the industry right now. For sure. And I think uh, do you do you use Notion at all? Because I feel like there really we're going after product people. Oh like, yeah. You know, like to because it wasn't a product tool at first. I felt like it was more like uh just communication, I guess, or more, you know, kind of collaboration. But then they really kind of honed into product and mm-hmm. put a lot of AI. I mean I like Notion. I think it's cool. Um, yeah, Notion, uh, amazing customization in terms of template you can use, especially for entrepreneurs. And now they're also expanding based on professions. You can use this template, that template. They also start to do lots of AI. And I think Notion was the first one that really jumped into AI at the very beginning, at least at a year and a half ago. I believe they start to like push, they change even the, the company name, they let like, the title, they said, Oh, we are old Notion AI. That's before. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Yep. They made it at Notion AI, Notion AI. When I look at it, well, you just kind of like guessing what people want to type next. And then, but they start to market themselves in Notion AI. And right now they have more and more AI features and out there. Uh, and then even my student inside of PM Accelerator and they start to use Notion a, a lot to organize the, the content and preparing for the interviews and also do the product management voice custom interviews. So lots of them actually leverage an AI. Uh, though I also found something very funny. I've, <laughs> this, that may not be good, but it's true. Um, well, <laughs> One of my students told me that when he's preparing for the Google interview, he had all his notes ready on Notion. And then whatever the interviewer asked him, he put some keywords on Notion in real time because everything virtual. And yes, then, of course, yeah. Yeah, and then, then, then the Notion just took all the notes he took inside our PM Accelerator and pulled the right framework and showed him relevant cases that's similar to the interview questions he was asked. That's but awesome, but I mean, that's what it's for, to make you more efficient because, you know, before yeah. you can have two screens and one you could, you know, pull those things and then the other one you can have the Zoom. Yeah, I hope the Google interviewer won't <laughs> feel too upset regarding how people are doing in real time, like pulling framework here and there, uh, just to answer uh, the interview questions. Uh, but if you are product manager today, if you're not using those tools, you're definitely a little bit disadvantaged because other people yeah. have been doing that. Great, cool. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, Anna, let's, let's keep talking regarding the ideation phase. You mentioned earlier saying that, hey, um, your team already leveraged AI to do ideation. Um, can you tell us, for example, in your company, I believe you're the leader in the media space and also AI space. Let's say you have big client, B2B client. When you do ideation, how did it work? Did you just put the ideas, just ask ChatGPT? to give you some ideas or you kind of do different kind of prompting based on different scenarios for the companies you help with and give us some like a in-depth analysis. Yeah. So usually when we take on a new client, we Mm -hmm. ask them to fill out a huge questionnaire, like, like about a hundred questions so we can get wow. that data and then I'll put that into chat GPT, for example. And we have an enterprise version, so it's all private, obviously data. So we're not sharing that, but, but yeah, we take, like, we ask them to give us the information and then we put that in and then we put some other prompts from other similar clients that we've worked in uh, with, and then that's where we will start the research. I see. Very smart. Asking them 100 different questions. So now you can use it to fine tune the model yes, you have. Yes, exactly. Because otherwise, it- yeah, we're not their product. We don't know your product like you know it, you know. So and sometimes mm-hmm. people find out a lot actually from those uh, 100 questions. They actually like they're like, oh, wow, I had no idea that 
like, you know, we didn't think about this or that. So there's a lot of like learning that happens throughout that process. Awesome. So in that process, what about how would you deal with those resistance of people adopting AI? Because we know for a fact, AI is replacing people's jobs. Not everybody were like, can I change? We know for designer, even marketers, I replace my marketers. Actually, I have two full-time marketers. Now I have one full-time marketer because the other person's job can be done by AI. So it actually is, in fact, replacing people's jobs slowly. Um, so which also means that whenever we introduce AI and lots of existing employees will feel, well, it's, it's eventually going to take over my work. Um, so when you introduce those kind of AI concept to a client, did you make it like very transparent upfront saying, Hey, we're going to leverage your AI to create ABCD strategies for you, or, um, you use a different way to communicate how you leverage AI. Um, so the good news is that we work with clients that are literally building AI, like our, we're very focused on working with people that are like building AI machine learning and data tools, mm. right. Or things like that. So they do, they want you to do that. They, I mean, if they feel like if you don't use those tools, you're probably behind as a marketer. Mm. Right. So, but I've, I've had, uh, I've had had some clients who do not want to be recorded, like, so uh-huh. that's very hard for us because a lot of the time when we have the conversations with our clients, we learn a lot. And then you want to like, you know, you have those tools that it records and then you can read it again and then you can come up with some ideas through there. Mm-hmm. So we have had some situations where clients won't let you do that. So that's like the only resistance that I've seen, really. The biggest resistance that they just don't want to be recorded for some reason. Like they think something, you know, like I have no idea why, but it's happened uh-huh. a couple times. Yeah. Interesting. They probably feel like the information can be leaked. Maybe to, to Google, like, or because we use Google, you know, like we use Google Teams stuff or like Google, you know, like me, because perhaps, because it is public, right? Like it's all open. Yeah, Even yeah. Even though maybe. We, use, we use an enterprise account though. So I don't know if it's, who knows what, because it is, maybe we could talk a little bit about like the risks, right? Because I feel like there's mm-hmm. a lot of risks with these tools too. Exactly. So let's like dive into the risk part. Can you tell us more regarding what kind of risks that yourself and your clients see in terms of using AI today? So right now, I mean, the, the, the number one thing that a lot of enterprises are trying to do is governance um, and mm-hmm. just to, you know, because basically they are required to do that. So they have to uh, to do training, they have to set up boards specifically to deal with these things, right? So the kind of things that can happen is, for example, as you know, hallucinations. So uh, yeah. like a model can hallucinate. An example of that is like, it could think like Lord of the Rings is the same as, uh, you know, a Harvard Business Review paper, like, you know, so like it's, that's like a really easy example of hallucination. There's mm-hmm. also mis- misleading information out there, right? And bad content. So you really have to like check your content, expect like, if, and um, when you're dealing with like healthcare or finance, that's very important because that is, you can't have, uh, first of all, you can't make mistakes on uh, information at all, right? Because that could actually kill somebody. Uh, so these things are really important. And I think, you know, um, like, I feel like bias is a big thing, like I mentioned earlier too. So, mm-hmm. and that can prevent people too from, uh, you know, accessing certain things or getting services or whatever. Uh, So I think when you are building your products as as a product manager, this is these kind of things you should definitely think about as you're moving through the process of product development. Yeah, exactly. And inside of AIPM Bootcamp, we actually invented our own framework to dive into how exactly create the best AI product. And one of the first loop we created is called AI Hypothesis which means before you even start to create any product leveraging AI, let's really think about can AI really solve the problem? And what is the data pipeline will look like, which is your data uh, strategy? And what is the type of hallucination you might be facing? And then then play with it. And you start to find out just like data input, data output from the AI model, and you start to see hallucination. And then what's the best strategy is really address those. And it's crazy. One of our... um, project inside AIP and Bookend is very interesting. Um, they created an amazing idea that they were able to help people with ADHD 
to stay focused, be more productive. And they're able to use API integration that integrate your Google Calendar and also your email. So you have different kind of commands, those kind of chatbots. People are like, oh, okay, so today Anna and Nancy are going to meet to do the podcast. And just say those simple command is going to feed into the integration with the Google Calendar and schedule for you. And then when you start to ask questions regarding, hey, what's going to happen? Uh, what, what's my schedule today? And things like this. And the AI start to hallucinate. It start to pull information from two years ago. It's like, oh, yeah. you see, you have meeting with Anna in 2024. I'm oh, sorry, two years ago, 2022. And da 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 da, going to happen this. Whoa, that's hallucination. It's actually is quite real um, in that situation. Um, which I want to ask you this question, Anna. Given you have um, worked with lots of like cutting edge AI firms themselves, what do you think those kind of like typical strategies to reduce or remove hallucination nowadays? Gosh, I think there's just there's a lot of different tools that people are trying to use and, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't think that's been solved yet. I feel like that is something that is still being worked on. Um, what have you seen? I mean, it's definitely I know there's tools for it, but there's not anybody that said like, oh, my God, this tool is like the thing that solves hallucinating. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, exactly. So the way we see where the strategies are being uh, using inside of our AIPM book and also the entire uh, industry is doing right now is that they must uh, improve the original data quality. Whatever you fit in is going to influenced how AI makes decision, which reflect back to the ADHD, the Google Calendar Management Tool, Productivity Tool. And later on, when we investigated the hallucination, why two years ago was because original training data is always from two years ago. So somehow a oh. AI just thought, oh, I thought everything was two years ago. So I just gave you outcome regarding that potentially is also two years ago, which also yeah. lead to the second strategy was also like the prompt engineering. And um, yeah. a lot of time AI makes very smart decision based on the, a the, the data we give them. And they thought this is the best outcome, but you must tell AI what not to do as well. Um, there was another uh, case which um, another team of us, they were able to use AI to create home renovation project, say you take a picture of your kitchen, you feed into the AI tool our student develop, and immediately it's going to spit out another AI generated image. But AI saw this. Wow, what if you can put a human in the kitchen so that <laughs> the design of the kitchen will become more real? Then you really know how tall is the counter top how big is your fridge and, and ai is thinking for us for for the good part but those human images inside of the original kitchen is not what we want we really want to see what exactly look like first and before you put a model inside the image and then you really need to use like a prompt and gym and teach ai not to do as well and the third right. part is which also feeding more customized quality data to AI, which we have seen uh, lots of students use, using RAC as a methodology to feed a better data and to AI and, and up, um, like fine tune this. This is also quite typic typical methodology. Yes, we, we I'm seen. actually going to be speaking on a RAG. Oh, it's a, a, I'm going to be a judge at a RAGathon in San Francisco oh. next week. Yeah. Oh, this is so, awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. So they have Pinecone and then they have some other rag tools there. But yes, those are the tools, I guess, that they use for hallucination mostly, right? So, so yeah, I'll let you know how that goes if there's any new tools that I see because it's a hackathon. So we'll see if there's yeah. any new cool, cool things that come out of that. Mm -hmm. I also discovered another tool for software engineers slash product manager. So it really depends on how you use the tool. Um, there's another quote called DevVZ, and I'm going to link it in the show note. And it's actually helping developers generate code and a high cool. quality code. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's well based on the website, and it's saying that it's supposed to increase the productivities of software developers significantly so they can modify the code a little bit. Uh, and then maybe you don't need to hire 10 software developers. You only need to hire three or maybe five. Um, so it's really making their life much easier. And of course, it's, it's a little bit controversial because, well, originally you have a budget to hire 10 software developers. Now you make them more productive to hire five. So what I, I think it's always some pushback regarding how people use AI 
tools today, but I personally found that it's amazing. And I was able to literally like train my own AI model using the data we pull from Kager and also like build an image recognition model to identify different species of flower by feeding in 800 different pictures and using TensorFlow, uh, different existing free tools. And I only did it within three hours on Saturday night. And then on an AI, I used ChatGPT. Let's really generate code for me. They launched a Python terminal. Uh, I have a terminal and load Python and say, hey, Nancy, copy this code, put here, da 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 It's just like, So like I literally blood. told you what, that's awesome. But I mean, not everybody could figure that out, Nancy. Come on. <laughs> that's that's what everyone that's needs an to advanced skills. use case, but that's an awesome, I mean, yeah, but that just tells you, you can do that. Like you can yeah. figure this out right now, you know? Yeah, that's, exactly. That's a game changer. But it's not a job replacement. You still need to have a human in the loop. You still need to have people looking for those hallucinations in the back, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes that could be missed. Um, so, you know, I think human in the loop still matters. And also people are just going to have to be, you know, kind of um, how would you say it? Kind of like thought matter experts more, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what we are already. So I feel like for people like us, it's just going to be, it makes our lives much easier. Mm -hmm. and, and totally, especially what I believe the AI cannot replace is where the human emotions, relation buildings, uh, and the interactions. And as, as you said earlier, totally agree regarding human in the loop is still very important. And also that's where the build trust with others. If you develop any kind of AI product to your client or somebody else saying that, hey, it's fully written by AI, it's like, mm, no, it's like, oh, it's assisted by AI. We are able to use AI uh, for some in productivities or innovation, and I modify the outcome and I create even better strategies and leveraging AI so that I can spend more time focusing on strategy part, not just operations. And yeah, so not just busy work, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It's a busy mom like you and me. It's like let's let's spend the time on the thing that really move in the middle. That's that's exactly. why I'm so in, uh, excited about how AI is changing the product manager's life altogether for everybody who wants to jump into this ai era and i think the step one is actually taking different type of ai courses to know what's the latest trends and also the fundamental ai skills and we have uh, eight recommended ai courses a majority are free and you guys can go to this website pmaccelerator.io slash AI courses to download the top eight recommended courses being valid and recommended by me. I'm also going to show, I'm also going to link it in the description. Anna, I have like two more questions for you. And we have been talking about like learning AI and what about growing yourself? And what do you think of the growth mindset? Any other tools that help you to develop yourself as well? Or in general, what kind of resources you recommend people to grow their career, their life, what different aspect in terms of growth? Gosh, that's a big question, Nancy. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing for me is uh, to stay grounded is uh, meditation. Uh, mm -hmm. I try to meditate for at least, you know, even if I could get five minutes in every day. So I think that's definitely an important practice just to kind of bring you back um, as busy as we are. Um, mm -hmm. that's very important. And then, um, you know, I think always learning, I mean, I feel like we're always reading, always learning, reading and learning is very important. So I think doing that every day, learning something new, uh, that makes you grow. And, uh, luckily for me, I, I'm in such an industry that I'm forced to learn every day. You know what I mean? I just learned so much from you today. And by doing this podcast and I get to do these great things every day. And I feel like that's what keeps me going and keeps me motivated and such. But I mean, I listen to some podcasts and I work out as well. I think you need to be active to be like, you know, just to be more balanced because otherwise like, you know, health is very important. If you lose your health, like you can't do anything. And AI is not going to help you with, with that yet. So, <laughs> you know, <Exactly>. so <laughs> someday when we're old, maybe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do some gene transfer. Leverage Pretty AI. Much, I mean, yeah, that that's what they're working towards. Hey, it's, you know, so that's exciting to see what happens with that. Yeah, exactly. And and I do like what you said. Actually, life is a school. 
And that's how I perceive it. So therefore, everyone needs to have those kind of growth mindset. Continuously invest in uh, invest continuously invest in themselves and learning different new skills that regardless is in AI or product management or just like health, fitness, and all together. Cool.、Exactly. And Anna,、um, how would other people be able to find you and follow you if they have any follow up questions? Yeah, so you guys can find me either on、uh, LinkedIn. Just I think Nancy's gonna share my LinkedIn profile. Just Anna Anderson. You can also follow Data Science Dot Salon、uh, on the website. We have a newsletter and all kinds of things if you are interested in more deep、uh, technical AI content. And on Instagram, I'm I want her shoes. So if you are a mama and you're interested in more entrepreneurial kind of That kind of content, more what we talked about at the end. Follow me on Instagram. So yeah, for sure, I'm the number one fan on your Instagram. I love all the work life integration, and I believe lots of entrepreneurs is also moms and being able to do everything, and also need to be the best mom ever and help the kids grow and also be the best like educator.、Uh, there's many different things we can all learn from each other, and so happy that was. I like all your posts. Awesome, great! Thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a fun conversation. Thank you, Nancy. It was a lot of fun, and I learned a ton, as I said. The step one of becoming a generative AI pro manager is actually learning AI right away, and also start to figure out what's the best opportunity to gain all the hands-on experience. And therefore, make sure to watch this video where I give you the complete roadmap, the step-by-step guide to learn Gen AI and also gain Gen AI experience right away. If you like any of free resources we provide today, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMAccelerator.io. I'm gonna see you in my next video. Right here.